Osteoporosis is the most common metabolic bone disease which happens because of inadequate bone formation or because of increase in the resorption of the bone. Now this uh, can be generalized that is it is present throughout the bone all the bones including axial skeleton as well as the peripheral skeleton or it can have predominantly a localized involvement. A localized involvement happens when there is decrease in the activity in the limb that limb will have uh, the, there will be osteoporotic change or osteopenia there is decrease in the density or in the arthritis mainly in the rheumatoid arthritis there will be periarticular type of osteopenia and the uh, chronic relapsing pain syndrome which happens post trauma uh, which can be also called as the reflex sympathetic osteodystrophy or uh, sudex osteodystrophy or the causalgia are the ty two types of the chronic relapsing pain syndrome in this also there will be uh, some nerve that is getting damaged and on that nerve distribution there will be osteopenia uh, that can be seen now in the transient osteoporosis of the long bone most commonly affecting uh, the uh, hip joint it is a transient osteopenia or the transient osteoporosis that is happening there uh, which will resolve uh, with time now how a bone develops it bone develops from osteoblast which will deposit type 1 collagen which will form osteoid after the deposition of the type 1 collagen and on which there will be calcification which forms osteon now this osteon is a calcified mature bone and this has to be continuously resolved acted upon by osteoclastic cells and there is continuous resorption happening on which there should be continuous calcification happening now this cycle is must for maintaining the the tensile strength of the bone so this will be continuously undergoing osteoclastic activity now the different diseases act here as i told before osteogenesis imperfecta will have abnormal collagen osteomalacia and rickets will have improper deposition of the calcium and osteopetrosis will have improper or decreased osteoclastic activity so there is no resorption thick bone but brittle bone will be formed now exactly opposite to osteopetrosis is what is what we call osteoporosis in which there is increased osteoclastic activity there is increased resorption now because of this increased resorption increased osteoclastic activity bone is becoming uh, less denser and it will become uh, osteopenic and uh, this is how the osteoporosis act now the other disease that we need to know is the Paget's disease now the Paget's disease happen uh, because of increase in the osteoblastic activity as well as increase in the osteoclastic activity we again uh, get a bone which is marble like bone that is the Paget's disease so this is a various diseases which acts at different pa parts of the same cycle uh, but osteoporosis acts at the acts by causing increase in the osteoclastic resorption now each bone is made up of a, a, a collagen which is deposited in the vertical and horizontal pattern and inside that there will be calcification so these two are the must in a bone formation of two diseases which are having low calcium in it is one is the osteopenia malacia the other one is the osteoporosis the difference is in the osteomalacia the amount of collagen remains the same whereas it is disorganizedly arranged whereas in osteoporosis the uh, collagen number reduces mainly the horizontal uh, band in the vertebral bodies the horizontal trabeculates are reduced in case of the osteoporosis so quantity reduced of collagen along with that there is no redu uh, reduced calcium in the bone and this reduction in the collagen happen because of the enzyme collagenase which is present in this now this image is showing that this is the normal vertebral body uh, it will be looking white in color and in osteoporotic bone the vertebral body appears less whiter because it is a uh, osteopenic bone the density reduces and also now because the density reduces now the trabeculation the vertical trabeculations we can see clearly the horizontal trabeculations are not seen because the horizontal trabeculations are the ones which are thinner compared to the vertical and that's why they they are lost easily and whenever this kind of loss of the horizontal trabeculation happens the ability of the vertebral body 
to the to bear the weight also reduces and this reduction is much more than the amount of uh, horizontal trabeculation is reduced if 50 percent of the the horizontal trabeculations are reduced then more than 75 percent of the weight bearing capacity of the vertebral body is reduced so that's how important uh, horizontal trabeculations are also in the vertebral body so Mainly we see the loss of horizontal trabeculations, diffuse osteopenia or the changes that we see in the osteoporosis. The other than this, the osteoporosis mainly we have a multiple non-traumatic fractures which will be usually present or traumatic or the trivial trauma fractures for the trivial trauma are common in this. Now in this image we can see that the diffusely osteopenic bone, the cortex is also not that clearly seen here and diffusely osteopenic looks more blacker and also we can see there are some fractures here. These are the ulnar, uh, the femur, ulnar uh, uh, styloid fracture and the radial uh, neck fracture and here we can see the the femoral neck fracture and the proximal uh, humerus is undergone fracture and all the bones are looking diffusely osteopenic. So these are the features the diffuse the osteopenic bone and there are fractures these are the uh, findings that we see in the peripheral bones when you go to the vertebral body see this is a normal vertebral body how we have vertical and the horizontal trabeculation dense vertical and horizontal trabeculation when there is osteoporosis we see there is reduction in the number of uh, the horizontal trabeculations because of which see we can see some vertical striations continuous vertical striations whereas in this image we can see slightly farly far placed vertical trabeculations that we are seeing and there are no horizontal trabeculation that's how the osteoporosis gets worsened that is the horizontal trabeculations is lost first then eventually some vertical trabeculations also lost so that's the, that are the axial changes that we see the other change that we see in the uh, vertebral body includes how uh, this thinning of the uh, the cortical bone happens so because of the the cortical aspect outer aspect of the bone becomes thin we can see something called as picture box vertebrae or the the picture frame outer picture frame vertebrae the other place where we see picture frame vertebrae is uh, in the osteopetrosis also we see a uh, picture frame uh, vertebrae uh, but here in osteoporosis what we see is that thin rim of uh, the vertebral body is uh, what we see or the empty box sign or the picture uh, frame vertebral body is what we see here see thin line of the vertical body is seen outer aspect now this is the cortical rim that we see and along with that how radio lucent the bone is and we can see some vertical trabeculations now more than using picture frame we have to use the empty box which is specific for the osteoporosis the term empty box is specific and again we see some non-traumatic uh, wedge compression factors and again we can see severe osteoporotic bone with the uh, empty box uh, sign of the vertebral body and here there is a kyphotic deformity because of the wedge compression fracture again one more image showing that there is uh, osteoporosis there is uh, empty box sign there is uh, the uh, the fracture wedge fracture uh, with slight kyphotic change is what we see in the peripheral skeleton in the peripheral bones in the uh, proximal end of the femur we, are, we will see this osteoporotic change the bone will look more blacker and now all this uh, the, the the lines we can see very clearly uh, these are the uh, the greater trochanter lines the principal compressive lines the princip uh, the principal tensile lines the secondary tensile lines and uh, the secondary uh, compressive lines all these lines are uh, becomes more prominent Th these are the lines which are normally present because but because of the calcification and uh, thicker lines we cannot see these lines but in case of osteoporosis we can see these lines now one of the way uh, that we examined till now is in the x-ray the other thing that we can use is the dual energy x-ray absorptiometry now this uses x-ray as uh, the source of energy and there are uh, the x-ray uh, source is kept below the patient below the couch and above that there is a detector now there will be continuous uh, uh, x-rays which is which is uh, which is uh, emitted and which will be detected by the detectors and there are two ways one is a constant energy uh, the uh, constant x-ray is present the other one is a pulsed x-ray and there are two different photon energies now two different photon energies they use so that 
we have to differentiate a bone from the soft tissue. Now, whatever the x-ray comes from the soft tissue and bone, we can differentiate by using two energy x-rays. That's why you use two energy x-rays and that's how we get a, a x-rays from a two different uh, uh, tissues that is bone and uh, the soft tissue then we take only the excess which has come from the bone and we evaluate the amount of the calcification that is present and then it is depicted with the t-scoring now with this t-scoring we get uh, uh, the values based on the standard deviation if the value is less than that normal but within within one uh, z score of one or the one standard deviation then it is normal but if it is between one to two point five less than the normal we give it minus one to minus two point five then uh, then we uh, consider it as osteopenia but if it is less than minus 0.25 that is if it has reduced the maximum then we call it as osteoporosis along with that if there is fragile fracture then it is considered as severe osteo severe osteoporosis so if if the bone the dense bone has will become less denser now but it is uh, it is not as less as an osteoporosis then we consider it as osteopenia now otherwise we consider as osteoporosis now when it has some fracture associated with it then we call it as severe osteoporosis that's how we grade the osteoporosis uh, using the dexa scan now this is how a dexa scan works in an axial skeleton the vertebral bodies are outlined along the posterior the the posterior elements and then the mineral content per grams in, in, in the form of grams and the area in the form of square centimeter of each vertebral body is calculated and the result is uh, then, then generated in the form of mean aerial density so for each area how much is the density so mean aerial density is represented represented and then this is compared with the normal of the a young patient of the same uh, the young patient uh, this is compared with the young patient to see how much is the reduction. Now that's how we compare the DEXA scan in the peripheral uh, bones. We use like more, we use mainly the hip bone that is the proximal end of the humerus. We take a uh, boxes that is either we say take the entire femoral neck. It covers the entire femoral neck, or we use the ward area. That is the ward area is the area. Uh, where you can see the maximum osteoporosis changes happening or we can take the entire proximal uh, end of the humerus or we can take only the uh, greater trochanter now once we uh, take these areas then we uh, find the bone mineral densities at this area and then we diagnose it as uh, osteoporosis if the z score comes below minus 2.5 that is the uh, it becomes more and more negative then we consider as it is an osteoporotic bone now these are all the just uh, the observational method now how to quantify uh, uh, the amount of osteoporosis but uh, the, this we for this we use ct scan for this now it provides a separate bone marrow density for trabecular bone as well as cortical bone and this is a true volumetrical mineral density measurement unlike the dexa scan here we properly give the measurement in milligram per centimeter cube and axial uh, sides are seen uh, separately and the peripheral sides are seen separately now this is how we do uh, the the quantitative analysis using uh, ct that is we take a scout image the first four lumbar vertebrae are uh, vertebral bodies are selected then we take a ct cut there then we mark an el elliptical roi to find the volume and also uh, to uh, to see the amount of density h2 value in this area we find the uh, use an ROI and find and also see here we keep a phantom along with this now with this phantom we compare the H2 value of the bone with that of a phantom and then we get a value of uh, the density in milligram per centimeter cube by comparing these two vertebral bodies the, by comparing the vertebral body with the phantom I get a value uh, which tells how much is the osteoporosis and how much is the calcium hydroxyapatite deposition in milligram per centimeter cube. The similar thing is done even in the proximal end of the humerus uh, using uh, 3D volumetric uh, rendered uh, reformated images. 
or uh, we again uh, do the similar technique is done on the proximal end of the humerus so this is a, how we saw the in the visual uh, the changes and quant uh, the qualitative and quantitative measurements we saw uh, how we measure the osteoporosis but uh, what happened is eventually they found that it doesn't matter how much is the density of the bone which is rep uh, which is responsible for the future fracture so we have to predict the the possibility of the fracture in the patient so what exactly predicts the fracture uh, was found to be uh, some other factors now the vertebral body fracture can be anterior wedge fracture it can be biconcave fracture or it can be crush fracture so if the verte if this is the vertebral body this is a spinous process if the vertebral body is compressed anteriorly it is called as an anterior wedge fracture if it is compressed in the middle it is called as the the, the biconcave fracture or if it is having the posterior wedging it is called as a crush fracture usually now this fractures will not it will be a traumatic fracture without any significant trauma here and it will be usually milder form of fracture and usually asymptomatic the osteoporotic fractures are usually asymptomatic kind of fractures now this is a technique or that is a morphometric software which decides that if there is fracture or not this is nothing you have just have to do a lateral uh, lateral radiograph and then the software by itself will be defining the vertebral edges and measures the height of each vertebral body it will be measuring the height of the vertebral bodies and it will define the edges and then it will quantify uh, the the diagnosis of the fracture and how much is the the fracture how much is the compression is diagnosed by this morphometric software now only the operator's work is only to see if the marking is proper now usually it will it will place there is something called six point placement that is one in the anterior one in the posterior one in the middle of each end plates there are six points which are which are placed and the only thing that observer the operator operator has to do is just to check if the placement is correct and if it is not correct he just has just have to the the change the the place of this point now other thing uh, that uh, this gives is this gives how much is a fracture and how many vertebral bodies are fractured and how much is the amount of fracture is what is given by this morphometric software now what what is important for us is not to know that if there is how much is the density loss how much is the fracture but our main aim is to how much this patient is prone for fractures so for that we see the trabecular bone now the but this is a trabecular bone appearance that we see in a ct this is a trabecular bone that we see in mri now based on these patterns we can predict how bad the bone is and how how much is the chances of this bone undergoing fracture and this is what is given by this trabecular bone imaging by an mdct and a mri which is a high resolution uh, imaging which will give the trabecular pattern and how much is the thinning of the trabeculation and how much uh, is the loss of the trabeculation is given by these images and this will help us to predict uh, the uh, for the fracture better than uh, the other modalities that we have seen now these are the dds of osteoporosis that is the, the the wedge fractures can also be seen like this in multiple metastatic lesions multiple level fractures but we can see some altered signal intensity lesions which will be present in this case so we can rule out the metastasis that way and this is uh, the case of hyperparathyroidism it will have diffuse osteoporosis but we can see like here there is some subperiosteal uh, resorption we can see in between these two lines there are some black areas there is nothing but the subperiosteal resorption that's how we differentiate a hyperparathyroidism so this is all about uh, imaging of osteoporosis